So in this video, I'm going to show you how we transform this garage floor into an amazing looking epoxy garage floor coating. So if you've clicked on this video, you're probably thinking or wondering just what it takes to do an epoxy coating in your garage floor. You know, what it costs, can I do this myself? What type of product should I use? And just what's the process, you know, how long does it take? I'm sure you've got all kinds of questions. Well, in this video, I'm going to answer all those questions. And also, you'll learn if that this is the type of thing you might want to try to DIY yourself. And if it is, you know, how do I know all the exact steps to take to make sure this epoxy coating comes out fantastic, just like this one's going to. Now, we do dozens and dozens of these coatings a year, and the process for us is always the same. Sometimes we might use a couple different manufacturers uh, coatings because we like there's two or three different ones we like and depending on you know just when we can get them shipping and stuff like that what well, might depend on what we use but I'll share with you at the end of this video just the product we use to do this floor and give you a suggestion maybe for another company that we like to use a lot too. Now this concrete was actually in pretty good shape this is about a 1200 square foot garage floor had a little uh, like a laundry room there's a washer and dryer in behind that door and then it had a set of stairs that led up to the house upstairs but what we couldn't quite tell when we first showed up here was this garage floor had a very thin clear film of concrete sealer on it and that sealer <laughs> it came off pretty hard so we rented that grinder that 10 inch grinder and that took it off pretty easy. We always grind our concrete before we do any type of epoxy coating. That's just rule number one. You gotta grind the concrete, you gotta prep it right. And then, you know, if there's any little tiny cracks or pop outs or chips or divots, we have uh, a, a repair material we use that fills them in that's pretty easy to use too. And I go over all that later on, but that's that's basically how we start each job is we we get the grinders out you know we'll, we'll grind the floor you can see how nice and ground it is now it's the grinders not only prep it for the coating but they clean it too they get off any you know debris oil dirt dust stuff like that uh, ground in you know wh whatever that floor has been uh, had on it over the last 10 15 years or however old it is the grinders really clean it up nice and then we vacuum it a couple times, get all the dust off, and then uh, we're ready to apply the base coat. Now the base coat, this one, this one has a little bit of a moisture mitigation uh, a property to it too, so it, it blocks a little bit of moisture. Plus, it it acts as the base coat and the primer all in one. And we put this down at a we put it down at a certain square footage per gallon, so a certain a certain thickness on every single garage we do and it it comes in multiple colors you know depending usually on the f color of the flake we're using that will kind of dictate to us the color of the base coat we use and 90 some odd percent of this this gray colored base coat will be covered up by the flake so you don't really see the base coat afterwards but we like to use a, a color in the base coat similar to one of the colors of the flake. Now we mix up, we mix up the base coat. We're actually using um, polyaspartic. It's a, it's a chemistry that's just a little bit different than epoxy. And we really like the polyaspartics because they're a little bit more, um, what can I say, durable, I guess, than epoxy. So we, we typically, and a lot of times we're on a job for, and we only have one day, so we can get polyaspartics that cure up really, really fast. Like they'll cure up in an hour. So we can move right on to the next step. Now, if you're doing your own garage, you don't really need it to cure that fast. You could, you could prolong this thing out into a couple days if you need to, or even three days. So for us, you know, we like to come in and grind the floor, get all the prep done. We like to come in and do the base coat and flake let that cure up and then we like to do the top coat all in a day so the customer is only down you know maybe and then you know we let the 
we let the coating cure out for a couple days after that so the it minimizes the time the customer is without their garage um, but again like I said if this is your garage you can you can probably push that out to doing all the prep in one day doing the base coat and flake like this in the second day and then doing the top coat in the third day if you know if you've never done this before but basically you know if you're thinking of doing this yourself you got to figure out can are you capable of grinding the floor either with a you know a walk behind grinder like like we were using there that one's pretty aggressive you, you've got to keep moving it back and forth you can't let it sit in one spot or it'll actually dig a little trench in the floor because it's really aggressive and really heavy can you grind this by hand you know if your garage is quite a bit smaller you might be able to just use a seven inch grinder or maybe a little four and a half five inch grinder to grind the concrete and repairing you know any little tiny cracks or anything divots that you need to repair are you capable of doing that and if you're if you're pretty handy then you probably are and I have a way you can do it I'll, I'll talk to you about it a little bit later in the video that you could learn how to do that and then basically what you need to do is just you need a step-by-step -step process on you know what product are you using what manufacturers product what are the mixing ratios how do you mix it how do you roll it down to get the right coverage and then you can see how I'm broadcasting the flakes that's probably one of the easier parts of doing this but what to look for when you broadcast the flakes you know what kind of things you look for to make sure you have a really nice even coating so those are some of the questions you got to answer if you're thinking of doing this yourself and if you're thinking of hiring somebody to do this well you just want to make sure they have really good experience um, check their references you know how many how many of these floors do they do a year is this all they do is just epoxy coatings and do they use you know good high quality products not not necessarily the big box brand products you know the one part of epoxies or whatever they they advertise there we grind off a lot of those because they just don't bond well to the concrete they flake off and you know people will will use those at first they'll apply them they're actually pretty easy to apply and then all of a sudden you know a month down the road two months down the road they're starting to flake off under where they drive in where the tires are first and then where they walk second and then you know then they're calling us saying hey, can you come fix our floor we end up grinding all that stuff off and putting on ours <laughs> and then ours you know based on how we prep it and the products we use last for years and years and years doing it the same way That's it. It's like a carpet. so if you don't want to do this stuff, you know, if you think this is too much work, then you gotta you gotta search for somebody in your area that does this for a living. You know, this is what they do, and they do a really good job. And then, you know, maybe you can go look at some of the past floors they've done. This is after it's flake, so base coat and flake is down. At this point, we let it sit for an hour, hour and a half, and then we can jump right back on it because we use really fast setting stuff, and then we we start. The process of putting the top coat on and that first process is always scraping the flake getting it all the loose flake up getting the, the flake scraped really smooth so it's uh, easy to top coat and you know, again you know there's certain steps to doing this right and you can figure out yeah I think I could do that or you could say this is way too much work but if you're going to hire somebody like me, you know, you're going to expect to pay, depending on what part of the country you're in, anywhere from maybe like five bucks a square foot to eight or nine bucks a square foot, really, in that range. You're going to expect to pay something like that to get a good quality person. If I, In my opinion, if somebody's going to be under five bucks a square foot, that would throw a big red flag up to me because... Number one, they're probably not using the highest quality product, so they're using pretty cheap product in order to make enough money and labor to make it worth their while. And if they are using really good product, then they just they're not charging enough in labor, and they they pro and that means they probably don't know what they're doing. So, you know, a minimum of five bucks a square foot is be you know five five fifty, all the way up to eight or nine for guys that really really know what they're doing and you know maybe there's a little bit more repair with the floor with a price that jumps up to that range or maybe they're grinding off some type of coating 
um, versus just coming in on a brand new, nice, clean floor that, you know, that, that would add a little bit more labor to it if they're grinding something off the floor. And then you're always using a really good top coat. I mean, the top coat is basically what's protecting the floor. We always use the polyaspartic top coat. Now we've used some really good polyaspartic and epoxy products in the past, and I still like them. But what I'm what I'm always searching for is a combination of things. Um, you know, really good, really good coating material. So really good product number one. Good price point. Uh, good good customer service. Good shipping. And if you you know if you have any questions, you can call them and they pick up the phone. So it's a combination of a bunch of things. And the product we've been using this year that we've had really good luck with, and we found that we really really like, is the Poly Armor products from Deco Crete Supply in Ohio. So you can find them online www.decocretesupply.com. I'll have a link for them down in the description below too, but. We're using their Poly Armor 70 for both the base coat and the top coat. We just add color to the base coat. Their 70 uh, dries the quickest for us, so we can do it all in a day if we need to. They have a Poly Armor 80 and a Poly Armor 90, and basically what add, what the numbers are are the solids count. So 70 has a little more solvent in it than the 80 does or the 90. The 90 is 90% 90 solids, pretty much odor free. Uh, probably the better product to use if you're a beginner. So again, I'll have a link for all that stuff down in the description below. That, that's what we've done all our coatings, epoxy garage coatings with this year. So, and another thing, if you wanna learn how to do this, I have an epoxy garage epoxy flake coating course down in the description below where I actually teach you step by step. I got multiple jobs like this in there that teach you how to do this just like we do it. And that would be my recommendation for, you know, if you wanna do this yourself, guys. Thanks a lot, thanks for watching.